Hello everyone, this course is called stochastic control and communication. Uh, although these are the two words I have used in this course, uh, what I will try to persuade you towards the end of the course or through the course or through the course of the course is that there is that stochastic control, communication, several problems in collaborative decision making like team decision theory, like problems in economics, organization theory and so on. All of these can be thought of in one common framework. They are actually all instances of a, a larger kind of theme of decision making under uncertainty. And the way these problems, the way the decisions and the uncertainty and the information and the dynamics, all of these things, the way they interact with each other give rise to these various different problem classes that have been studied in as different, uh, you can say different disciplines across, across uh, academic, across all of academia. So what I, what I want to uh, do through this course is is to sort of persuade you that one can look at all of these problems in in unison in in under one kind of lens and under one kind of common common uh, common way of thought in that sense this is actually not a regular course in stochastic control or a regular course in communication it's it is sort of a blend of the two or a way of trying to look at both together or look at both through a common lens so welcome to this course i hope you will uh, you will all uh, take back uh, this this view from this course a view that that is that is uh, that is very close to my heart and is as one there where uh, which on which i have worked on for several years i hope you will you will all benefit from this so the so as i said the idea is to think of the following the following topics one stochastic control, second is information theory or communication theory, team decision making or collaborative collaborative decision making and several problems in economics. several problems in economics all of these should we would like to think of in one common framework okay so one common framework that equals this course. So you might wonder what is what is common to all of these these different ways of decision making. So what is common to all of these different ways of uh, different types of problem classes. So what is common is that they all fall under this broad umbrella of what I call decision making under uncertainty. So now decision making under uncertainty has two key aspects okay. So which means what does this mean there is there are two key aspects first is there is a decision a decision is some some kind of variable whose value you want to choose it is an one of the an set of alternatives that you want to choose or something like that 
So, it, so this is a decision that you need to make and obviously then the other aspect is that there is uncertainty. Now uncertainty, now what do you mean by uncertainty? Uncertainty means that there refers to a, a an aspect or, or a variable in the problem whose value is not fixed. Okay. So variable whose value variable whose value is not not only is not is, is not is not fixed or not constant it is also not known at the time the decision is to be made okay is not known is is not let me say not fixed and not known at the time of making the decision right so decision is a a a, a one a choice out of a set of alternatives is a choice from a set of alternatives okay so this could be a value for a particular variable or one element from a certain set and uncertainty is is a variable whose value is not fixed and not known at the time of making the decision okay so in the absence of uncertainty in the absence of uncertainty all elements of the problem are all elements of the problem are fully known okay and have definite values so in the absence of uncertainty we can say the whatever is the variable that captures the uncertainty already has one fixed value and that fixed value is already no, is known to you when you are when you have to make this particular when you have to make your decision so as as such you can say you can think of this as as a kind of well posed decision making problem because uh, or or a, or say a very well uh, or a very you can say in some sense an easy decision making problem because all you have to do is think of that one particular value for that for the for the uncertain variable and ask what is the best decision when this variable takes this particular value the problem with uncertainty that arises with uncertainty is that the the uncertain variable can take many different values and and therefore thereby lead to many different scenarios and as a result of that you need to uh, you 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 know that the kind of decision that you need to take may vary with the scenario but you cannot choose a decision that varies with a scenario you cannot choose a decision that is that is tuned to different scenarios or to different values of the variable what so you have to choose a decision before even the variable makes its value known to you knowing only the the only certain characteristics about the variable say for example knowing only that the variable can take a certain range of values or knowing a probability distribution about the variable or something like that so we in the, in that sort of framework you need to take you need to take your decision this is the issue this is decision making under uncertainty so and uh, what i'll persuade you through this course is stochastic control com information theory team theory and several other problem classes all actually have this one common common uh, flavor to all of them that one has to make a decision with the lack of knowledge of a certain uncertain variable okay all right so these are the two key elements of of a, de a decision making problem under uncertainty now whenever there is uncertainty involved in a problem this it results in two kinds of phenomena or two kinds of uh, issues or aspects that one has to consider okay so two kinds of 
two important aspects of decision making under uncertainty. Two key aspects, the first aspect is that there is an issue, there is an element of what we call risk. Decision making whenever there is uncertainty there is automatically there is automatically an aspect of, of risk ok. Now I will tell you what this 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 risk by, by risk you may think of this as, as a word from English with, with an English meaning that something is risky say a road is, is very slippery therefore it is risky or uh, or is uh, or an asset is extremely volatile therefore you think it is risky or, or uh, betting is risky or something like that but there is a very precise way in which we can think of risk okay so uh, that i will talk to you about that so but 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 the important thing to consider is the way we make decisions Re whenever there is uncertainty involved risk is 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 endemic okay you cannot sort of wish away risk so risk is an almost an integral part of any decision pro making problem under uncertainty. Now I can I caution you risk by risk I do not mean the English meaning of risk there is a certain formal way of thinking about uh, of, of defining what I mean by risk and I will come to that ok. So that is so one is risk the other aspect is that of information gathering. See when we are when we have to make decisions under uncertainty obviously because you do not we are we are choosing a decision before then before we know the value of the uncertainty. So consequently one of the things we would want to do is to know more and more about the problem more and more about the uncertain variable and this this aspect therefore manifests itself in the issue of information and information gathering information transfer information leakage and so on ok. So, the role of information is, is again a fundamental aspect to, to problems of decision making under uncertainty ok. The way in fact the nature of the problem, the character of the problem, the hardness of the problem all of this changes dramatically as if you change the way I give you or change the assumptions under which I give you the uh, information ok. So, the way I uh, the the manner in which the information is revealed, the sequence in which it is revealed, the timing at which it is revealed all of this changes the way the nature of the problem and all of this gives rise to different types of problems ok. So, so bear in mind that information gathering has a fundamental role also in addition to risk in problems of decision making under uncertainty ok. So now let me let me go through these two issues one by one. So the first issue is that of risk. Now what do we mean by risk? So if you want to understand what I mean what you mean by risk let us consider the following uh, let us consider the following uh, one one particular example of, of what we mean of what risk could uh, of what uh, that, that sort of tells you what risk is ok. So, suppose you are suppose you have let us say a, suppose there is a cake ok and that cake is worth worth 100 rupees. Now, now I tell you ok I tell you that you have the following you have the following option you have the following lottery ok you pay 100 rupees ok you pay 100 rupees to enter into this lottery ok. So, there is a lottery now you pay 100 rupees 100 rupees to enter this lottery now and the lottery is as follows. So, if you now 
what I will do is I will toss a coin and the coin is not a fair coin with two thirds probability it will come uh, uh, it will give me one outcome and one third probability it will give me the other outcome. Okay. So, I pay 100 rupees uh, to get into to enter the lottery I draw my I toss my coin okay, to enter the lottery that a coin is tossed if so and with two thirds probability okay, with two thirds probability with probability two thirds I will get a cake I will get three, three such cakes. Okay. And with with prob and with probability one third I will get on I will get 0 cakes. The question is would you be interested in this lottery? The cake is worth 100 rupees it costs you 100 rupees to get to also enter the lottery. Okay. With prob when once you enter the lottery the the uh, you are, the lottery is as follows with two thirds probability you will get 3 cakes. Okay and with one third probability you will not get any. So, the question, the question that is being asked is would you be interested in this lottery. Now there are many different ways in which one can approach this problem. The simplest way is to say well what am I getting on average? Okay. What am I getting on average? Well on average what I am getting is two th with probability two thirds I am getting 3 cakes. So, probability two thirds into 3 and with probability one third I am getting 0. So, what I am getting on average is actually 2 cakes and with the 100 rupees that I had I could have bought I could have uh, I could have potentially bought uh, I, uh, I could have potentially bought just 1 cake and I am therefore, I compare the 100 rupees that I have which is which for me is worth 1 cake and on the other hand this lottery which on the lottery on average is giving me giving me 2 cakes. So, I would rather prefer I would prefer the lottery. So, the logic again let us let us recollect the logic again. So, one kind of logic let me put this in quotes because I will later argue that this is actually not a complete logic. Okay. So, one possible logic. So, you have take the average outcome. The average outcome is 2 third into 3 cakes plus 1 third into 0 cakes that is equal to 2 cakes. Okay. And the cost of entering the lottery is actually is rupees 100 and 100 in 100 or can buy you one cake. Right. Okay. So, on uh, rupees 100 can buy you one cake. So, so as a result since the cost of the lottery is uh, is uh, so it seems therefore, that the cost cost of lottery is less than the average outcome of the lottery implies I would prefer I prefer the lottery. This is one particular one one kind of one sort of logic, right? So this what this logic what was the train of logic? This logic it looked at the average outcome, it looked at the cost of entering the lottery, it compared the average outcome with the cost and said, well, if the cost of the lottery is less than the average outcome, I should I should actually uh, average outcome of the lottery. It makes sense to be in the lottery than to not be in it. Okay, so that uh, that is uh, that that is that is the logic here. 
Now let me show you why this logic fails. Okay, there is a there is a significant uh, uh, flaw that is that is that is sort of built into this logic. So let me let me ask you the let me show you for example, if this was not a, if this was not hundred rupees for a cake, but rather say for example uh, one crore for a house. Okay, so the question then is you have it is not a cake anymore consider this other lottery. Consider this other lottery. So, what do you do in this other lottery? You pay you this this lottery it costs you rupees 1 crore to enter the lottery. I mean not all of us have rupees 1 crore, but let us just assume for uh, suppose you have this 1 crore uh, to enter the lottery. Okay? So, I am just exaggerating for the sake of to making a point. So, we suppose it costs you rupees 1 crore to enter this lottery and the lottery again makes you the same offer. It will give you with two thirds probability it will give you a house that is uh, this this Okay, so, and this rupees 1 crore can buy you say pay rupees 1 crore to enter the lottery and 1 crore buys a house. Okay. Uh, a, a house of a certain size of a certain area. So, and the offer that is made in the lottery is again the same. It says with well, well probability two thirds, with probability two thirds, you will you will be you will be given a house that is thrice the size. This is three three x house with three x area. And there is a one third probability that you will not get anything at all, you will not get any house at all. Okay. So, question is would you bet rupees 1 crore to get into this lottery? So, if you if you if you bet if you bet 1 crore and it turns out that uh, uh, and and it uh, and and the and the second outcome is what comes out, okay, then in the uh, if you bet 1 crore and, and this outcome comes out great you get a house that is thrice the size if you uh, but but it can also happen that you don't get a you go don't you lose your you lose your 1 crore and you don't get anything at all okay now if i follow the same logic that you had outlined earlier that the logic that is there on top on the top of the page it is looking at the average outcome okay the average outcome here is still now in place of cakes you have a house Right, so the average outcome is then a house that is twice the size. The, out, the average outcome is a house that is now twice the size, and the cost of entering the lottery is the, this sort of a house of twice the size is is worth uh, is is let's say worth two crores, and the cost of entering the lottery is is the cost of entering the lottery is worth one crore. So because because of this comparison. It may once again you can you see that the cost of entering the lottery is actually less than the average outcome of the lottery. And once again by your by the logic that is outlined above it appears that what one should do is actually enter this lottery. Now the logic cannot be if this is your logic you cannot change it from problem to problem right. However, if if this if either either the logic is flawed or the lo, or or there is some way somewhere you have made a mistake in applying the logic but if you agree with this logic then the way the reason why by for which you entered the lottery for the cake for the two cakes you should have also entered the lottery for the for a house of twice the size 
Unfortunately, you, you see most people would actually disagree that these are the same. Most people will not think that these, this, no, most people will say well this second, the second lottery is not worth it. You know there is something, there is a sense in which although the, the, the above logic applies even to the second lottery, there is a sense in which the second lottery seems riskier. Okay? And this, this element of risk is what we will quantify in, 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 in we will soon quantify. Okay? So, the, this, this prob, the, 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 the uh, one, one way in which this element of risk manifests is, is the fact that as you scale the problem, okay, the, 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 op, the object, the, the outcome does not necessarily scale. So, if I replace a cake with a house, okay, if I, so and if I replace that rupee, 100 rupees with 1 crore, the, 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 the answer would not necessarily be the same. Okay? So, this is where the, 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 the sort of the reasoning flaw or the reasoning inadequacy that is present that is, that is present in this, uh, in this logic. And what we will see is that there is a much more a better way of, of looking at the problem than simply following this particular logic. Okay? This is partly from human decision making comes out also from a set of axioms. And once we go through this set of axioms, it will become transparent as to why why one should be adopting a certain type of model. Okay, all right. So with this, uh, I, uh, I I will pause here, and we'll I'll meet you after the break, and we will go over this uh, go over a much more sophisticated way of thinking about risk. Okay.